Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. And as always, I am your host, Matt, and today I'm representing the Patriots and their win in their fifth Super Bowl championship. It is amazing uh, to see them win. Yes, I am a fan. I am just outside of Boston, so of course I'm going to be a fan. Uh, and I'll tell you what I'm a fan of. It's page builders. I think they're finally turning the corner. I mean, I say finally, but I know many of you have been using these page builders for uh, at least a year, if not more now. And one of the ones I want to talk about today is Elementor. I've been playing around with it for a little while. Uh, and I want to point out the five things that I've found to be the best uh, parts of Elementor from a brand new user. Okay. So let's dive right in to using Elementor uh, on a website. Well, first, we, here we have Elementor, uh, their plugin page on WordPress.org. You can see five, uh, 4.9 out of 5 stars with 162 five-star ratings and then uh, only nine four-star ratings. So you can kind of feel comfortable choosing them, you know. Understanding, again, the whole point of understanding where they're coming from is what's the projected outlook of this software before you go all in. Um, you know, when you use page builder software, you're not really mixing up page builders uh, from, you know, one website to the next. You might do that with contact forms. Your client might require uh, a different kind of contact form, a different feature that, let's say, Ninja Forms has that Gravity Forms doesn't, and then sort of vice versa. In the case of page builders, you're sort of all in. Um, and you really want to make the choice uh, by spending time playing with it and getting used to it and seeing how it's actually going to work for your business and for your website, okay? So let's go ahead and look at Elementor on our website. I have a list uh, that I wrote down of the top five uh, things that I like about Elementor. And number one, the first thing that I like about Elementor, they give you a lot for free. And I think that that's really what... Uh, you know, got this whole Elementor ball rolling in terms of sort of the marketing push and just the general community adoption. I mean, if we take a look over here on the left-hand side, there's columns, headings, uh, the images. That's sort of all the basic stuff uh, that one would expect. But when you co start comparing it to other page builders, and that's not what this video is specifically, but you got a lot more like, you know, these uh, image carousels, image gallery, the buttons, the accordions, uh, this nice little SoundCloud widget. You have a lot of features um, and sort of these elements that for free, you can create some pretty uh, powerful, uh, powerful websites. You know, I, I know for a fact, unless it has changed within the last couple days, that even Beaver Builder, the button, is only available in the pro plan. Now, these are small little nuances, um, you know, but the idea is they have a lot. They're giving you a lot for free out of the gate, and I think that's why uh, people are sort of drawn to um, Elementor. There's one free element here that I'm going to bring up as my fifth reason for uh, recommending Elementor. Um, we're going to get to that in a moment. Number two, the second thing that I really like about Elementor is their uh, clean UI. Again, you know, looking at when you're going into the page building um, component of this, everything is is fairly clean and modern look and feel. You have the sidebar that sort of sits off to the side, and it really just does a really good job at sort of having a lot of options, but under one sort of nice, clean, consistent. Uh, panel. Sure, would I like to be able to snap this out um, and pull this out to be able to, you know, move it around my screen? Yeah, that, that would be kind of nice. But I can always shrink it like that and bring it out. That's pretty cool. I can resize it this way, which, you know, probably doesn't really do me too much. But it allows me to give, you know, it gives me some flexibility there. You can search uh, for uh, elements in here, which makes it a little bit faster to sort of, um, you know, drill down what you're looking, what you're looking for. I really like, you know, especially moving in through elements like this, the desktop view, the tablet view, the mobile view. This is a nice touch. Again, they all sort of do that, but they just doing it, you know, really well right here. And I, and I really do enjoy that. And I just like some of the nuances of their, um, of their UI. I think it's very nice. Like even just closing this out, um, when I go to close out the Elementor editor, I'm presented with, I can view the page on the front end or I can go right to the dashboard and view the page in the editor. It seems really 
simple and <laughs> and just like re really basic, like what a real basic feature that is. Uh, but it is something that over time when you're building pages and you're in and out and you're managing sites, it's a real time saver. So I really appreciate that uh, little call to uh, little call, call to detail. Number three, one thing that I particularly enjoyed about this uh, is the global fonts. Again, this is a small sort of uh, component to page builders and, and, and that sort of thing. But being able to identify and uh, select global fonts within your page builder elements is a huge time saver. Um, sure, you can go in and manage them from a particular element perspective. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, if I were to come into this section here and I put in a text box and you can see here, this is a heading element. I can select this and this is my text. And then what I can do is select the different sizes right here. Um, you know, and I can control all that stuff. So, so that's all good. And I can turn on the typography and I can change it even more. I can change the font families, the weights. I can do all that stuff from a much more drilled down perspective for each element. When would you want to use something like this? Well, when your theme has a certain set of fonts uh, and typefaces and sizes and weights that they use, that it uses, Elementor is not always going to get it right. It, there's an option for you to sort of absorb the theme uh, fonts. You know, you can can you always rely on that? Maybe 90% of the time. But when there is an issue and you do want to sort of fine tune it, um, it's a pain to go through each element and make those changes. But with their global setting and coming into global fonts, um, this is really cool. And you can set that stuff all up um, from a primary headline, a secondary headline, body text, accent text, that kind of thing. So that's really cool. And number four, the revision history stuff is is really cool. And this is a nice touch. And there's a few different things that they do in terms of options um, or resetting options. Uh, of course, one of them is this revision history where I can roll back and, and do different... Um, or excuse me, cycle back and go through these different revisions that I've made with the builder and change those and edit those out whenever I want. That's really nice. Uh, and second, when you go into each option here, so let me go into, uh, let's say section style. Let me just see if I can go in and I don't, well, I don't want to use this one as an example. Let's say boxed. No, that's not a good example. Let's go to, okay, color picker. Again, back to the color picker. If I select something and I apply that and I spend all this time sort of playing with those changes and I ultimately I'm like, you know what? I just need to reset this stuff. There's a reset button uh, under some of these options here, which is a great feature to have because sometimes you're playing with everything and you start getting way down <laughs> the rabbit hole and you're like, I just need to reset this, literally reset all of these changes that I've made. Um, that's a nice touch. So I really like the revision history and I really like the reset um, options of uh, of Elementor. I apologize. I keep looking down because I've got this new setup, as you might be able to tell. And uh, I'm using my camera here. It's still not where I want it to be, um, but I'm using my iPad to control it. And I keep looking at myself to make sure that everything is still good uh, on the video. Number five, and I think that this is where the, uh, or part of the reason why Elementor has really um, climbed in the rankings because I mentioned before they give you a lot for free. They're also giving you these pre-designed templates for free, which I'd imagine a lot of people really, really like. Um, because again, other page builders, you are, uh, you're paying for that feature, right? You're paying to get these, um, you know, these templates loaded into your site. And I think that having these predetermined layouts has really made, uh, element has really separated Elementor apart from the crowd. Now, of course, that's a whole business decision, but what do you care? You're the user <laughs> and you are just happy that you're getting these, um, these templates that you can sort of come in here and, uh, you know, edit and play with. And if you wanted to, uh, insert another, um, template, let me just see if I can go down to the bottom. I can. So if I insert another template, insert this one. Um, ah, this one's actually pro. So that's that's one uh, that they get you. And oh, yes, I see it right there. There's a little indication uh, that it's pro. You can see right up in the upper right-hand corner that it's pro. But let's go ahead and drop this one in. 
And uh, when you're inserting it, I'm, a, I'm, it's, I'm imagining it's going and downloading this from their servers and then inserting it here. Um, and as you, as you can see, just like with Beaver Builder, um, and I believe Divi, you can sort of mix and match these uh, these templates together and sort of, hey, maybe there's a components you like from one versus the other, and you can kind of play with that um, and, again, mix and match and make things a little bit more interesting for the web design stuff that you're doing. So that's the number five reason uh, of what I'm liking or the fifth reason of what I of how I'm liking Elementor and how they're setting this stuff up. So now the question becomes, what are you going to get for free uh, from Elementor and what are you going to get from the pro version? Um, I, you know, again, I haven't taken Elementor for a long term uh, test drive yet. Uh, I haven't launched it on any live sites short of just some local test uh, environment stuff that I'm doing. But they give away a lot for free, which again, I think is why uh, they've done so well and the community has been so, uh, uh, you know, uh, drawn to it. Um, short, you know, and of course, not just the free stuff, but it looks like it's put together well and it looks like, um, you know, they're they're making some real strides and in, in connecting with the community and that kind of thing. But the pro version will get you this, uh, this global widget, right? So you can come into Elementor and save. Um, let's see if I want to go and, I don't know, let me just save this one here. Section, save. I can save this uh, to my library. So I'm gonna say test layout, save it. So now it's in my library. Um, but when I want to create other elements, uh, like if I want to insert this on you know, another website or export it to bring it to another website, I can save this uh, with a global widget, which allows me to bring it anywhere when I upgrade to Pro. So that is a very nice uh, touch because you can make life a little bit easier for you as you grow, as you fine tune your global settings, or excuse me, your, your widgets, you can use them globally. That's really cool. Add your own CSS code, live custom CSS, eh, kind of handy. I'd imagine that most people uh, won't be doing that, but who knows, maybe they will. Um, design your, uh, design your entire site, excuse me, and embed it anywhere. This looks like a really cool feature. I wish I could pause this. I know this is an animated GIF, but, um, what you can do is you can kind of create, uh, again, I, I use these widgets again. I'll use widgets as a, as, as a term. You can create these pages, but you can actually use them in like widget format. So you can see that happening in this animated GIF right here. That's kind of cool. You can almost, it's almost like having a, a little call to action designer, uh, in your, uh, in your site. So that's a nice touch. And then there's other components, um, you know, other different uh, sliders and slides, WooCommerce support, and new templates, new professional templates uh, as well. And then they have a, another wider range of pro widgets that are coming. Uh, forms, again, slides, WooCommerce products, pricing tables, that kind of thing. Starts at 49 bucks. Give it a shot. I, you know, if you haven't fully committed to a Beaver Builder or a Divi, I'd say try this out, see what you think about it. Um, again, it's really going to come down to what community do you want to be a part of? What does the ecosystem look like? Uh, each one has its own flavor of doing things. So spend some time playing with uh, as many page builders as you can. On this channel, again, I've covered Beaver Builder, Divi, and now Elementor. Give those three a shot. Watch some videos. See which one you like. See which one works for your pricing uh, model, $199 for unlimited sites. Does that work for you? Uh, or does $100 for three sites work for you? Look at where uh, your where your business is at and how you're sort of reselling these things to customers because your customers should be the ones with the licenses, uh, not just you, uh, unless you're going to be the one that's contacting Elementor support, Beaver Builder support, that kind of thing. So take a look at it from that perspective as well. Plugintut.com, plugintut.com slash subscribe if you want to stay connected to the newsletter. If you enjoyed videos like this, go ahead and thumbs up. If you loved it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Leave comments below. That's Elementor. It's the five things that I like about Elementor. Uh, I hope it provides some insight to you. Hope it allows you to sort of look at Elementor from a different perspective, if not at least for the very first time. If you have comments, leave them in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.